One of the improvements in version 11 was that the section tool and elevation tool were separated. As well, as we're given a new interior elevation tool that works from the live 3D model. So if I just use the section tool at the moment, if I left mouse click on that, we can see up in the default settings, we have all our parameters that we can use there. But once again, I'm going to double click on the pulsing section icon. And first of all, under general, the this section that I create will be the first one. So I'm going to give it a reference ID of S-1. I can also name that section. If I change this from create new section viewpoint to place linked marker, what this does is that linked section markers have got no model space and they don't generate a new viewpoint. Instead, they are placed in a project then linked to an existing viewpoint view or drawing where the information is displayed in the marker. So I can choose any of these other viewpoints and it will link that to there. We can see the reference is there and if I click browse I can also access the same dialog box. So for example you might create a wall section that functions like a detail, place a source detail marker in the section window then place a linked wall section marker on the floor plan and that could be linked to a detail, possibly an existing DWG that you've graded before. Then we can also choose place unlinked marker. A marker like this doesn't display any linked information. But I'm just going to go back to create new viewpoint. So if I create a new section viewpoint, when I place this section marker, it will automatically appear under the sections section in the project navigator. So if I click on the navigator button where it says S-1 it will take me to this particular section and show me the model behind it. And then next is the status of this section we're about to create. It will automatically rebuild every time I open it. If I click on it in the navigator or if I open it from the floor pan or I can set that to manual rebuild. This will save time and I can also explode it into a drawing. At the moment, the marker will show on all stories or I can choose the home story, which is actually the story that I place the section on. We can also limit the range of the section. We're gonna have it infinite horizontally. We can limit it horizontally and we can have a zero depth marker. I'm just gonna put that back to infinite we can also define the vertical range of the section. At the moment, this part is grayed out, but if I check limited, it becomes active and I can define the heights through this dialog here. I'm quickly gonna go through these examples. If I draw an infinite section marker, if I left mouse click once, left mouse click twice, then the eye is asking me which way to look. I want the eye, I want to look towards the southern end of the screen and I left mouse click again. Once it's actually placed it, what it's saying is that I've cut a cross section through there and I'm looking down in this direction infinitely. So the computer has to calculate everything that's in that building beyond that line. If I right mouse click on the section or click on the icon in the navigator, I can actually open the section and it will calculate everything through that model in an infinite space. Now if I wanted to draw a section or another section, but this time I'm going to draw it as limited, make it infinite, and if I push OK, and I draw another section through there, I want to look in the same direction, but now, wherever I actually click again, I have to be aware where the eye is, because that's the depth of the elevation. So I'm going to click there, we can see 
that the elevation is going just to that point where the eye was. This node can also be edited by clicking on move sub element in the pet palette and I can move it closer or farther away from the origin, origin of the section. I'm just going to open that again. We can see the result of that. You should always make the computer calculate as little as possible to generate the documents that you need. So it's easy to calculate all the building elements between here and here than it is from this line and the whole project in front of it. This will just save time. Finally, we're just going to create a zero depth section. It's a left mouse click once, left mouse click twice. This time I'm going to look in the opposite direction and if I right mouse click on the section marker again, I can just open it quickly. Here we can see it's generated less information than the other sections that I created and it generated it quite a bit quicker. Now some of the other settings here, if I go back to this dialog box, I'm just going to collapse that. I can choose the type of line that the markers will be drawn with and there's a big range there and of course you can create your own line types, the pens that the line will be drawn with. I can also designate whether I want the section line to be continuous, in which case this all gets greyed out. Segmented, I can actually have it on the left hand side through the centre or on the right hand side. I can turn the middle off, the same for the right hand side. Over here I can nominate to have the arrow head not showing on this side or not having it showing on the other side. Over here I can choose a built-in section marker or no marker, in which case if that happens this all gets greyed out. I can also choose the marker pen, the fonts, and there's some other parameters in here, but it's probably easier to select the marker head from this dialog box and keep working down there. We've got a visual representation of all the different markers. For example, I uh, like this one. If I want some custom text, if you notice if I click on the marker section again, if I scroll down, we can see we've got the custom text there as well. And if you fill that in, that's what that other field was referring to. We can also fill in some custom text on the second row as well. Once you've got all that information done, model display, there's quite a few parameters here. Once I'll talk a bit more about these when I talk about the elevation markers, which has the same sorts of functionality. I can have a uniform pen for cut elements. So what this means is that wherever the section line that you create goes through the model, it will create those with the same pen type. So if I check that, these options become available. And here the fill might be red or... And the cut line might be red also. So you can set those to anything you like. And we'll have the cut fill background transparent. We can also change that to any any color or pen type that we like. Then un uncut elements. Once again, I can choose nothing, uniform pen color, own material colors non-shaded, and own material colors shaded. I'm going to leave it as non-shaded. Use uniform pen colors for uncut contours. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to leave the vectoral hatching on and transparency. Before, you used to have to go to the 3D settings to turn that on or off, but now we can do that in the individual section markers, which is a bit handy. If so, if you see elements through glass, you turn that off, and if you actually want to look through the glass, you turn the transparency on. We can also turn the sun on. If I want Victoria Sun Shadows, I just check that and here we can define how the shadows 
will be drawn. So I'm just going to turn that off at the moment. And I'm going to turn those off in the elevation. And the mark distance areas will go over when we talk about the elevations. So let's say I'm happy with all that. Now we go to show story levels. Once we open the section from the project navigator or the floor plan, there are three options, none, which grays everything out, and display only, which will show just on the computer, and display and output shows on the computer screen, as well as if you print the document. So this story, once again, we can choose the different line types, showing as dashed at the moment. We can designate the pen type. We can put heads or markers on both sides, turn the middle bit off, over here I can also designate the distance between the edge of the last element measured and where the markers start by changing that dimension there. Once again we can also choose no marker, built-in story marker, I'm going to use the Australian marker and of course a bunch of variables open up once we choose the marker. Once I push OK and I might just draw another marker through here and we can see how that marker looks different straight away and that says S4 this time I'm going to open it from the project navigator and here we can see how all the cut lines are all red which is how we set it now if I right mouse click on it and go to the section settings through there this time I'm going to change it to an infinite setting now we'll see the difference So. Over here we can see very clearly where, where the section is cutting through the model. We can see that very clearly in red and the material's own colours are being shown behind. And the rest of the model is obviously in a shaded view. Makes for a very colourful representation of that cross section. Another thing that might be worth noting is if we try and delete an elevation. I'm just right mouse clicking on an elevation there. And if I click on delete, this dialog box comes up. I can either cancel the deletion. I can actually delete the viewpoint, which will take it out of the floor plan and out of the project navigator. So it is truly deleted. And I can keep it as independent. And what this actually does, it actually deletes the source marker but keeps the viewpoint as an independent viewpoint and this has got absolutely no model source. Deleting a link marker has got no effect on any other elements at all in the project. We're going to move on to the elevation tool and the elevation tool in version 11 has been separated from the section tool and they've got slightly different functions but I'm just going to draw an elevation at the front of this building so once again, if I double click on this icon, we can see all its parameters. I'm just going to collapse all this. Once again, this is all identical to the section marker, so I'm not going to go through all of this again. I'm keeping this on infinite and infinite. So if I push OK, and I'm just going to draw a marker by left mouse clicking once, left mouse click clicking left mouse clicking twice and I'm going to left mouse click on exactly the same point when a black pencil comes up and then the eye comes up now I want it to look up this way and as soon as I do that we can see under the elevations now we have a new elevation notice that the icons are all different for sections and elevations as we go along it's worth taking note so you can recognize what they are just by their icons in the navigator. So if I double click on the elevation, E01, you can see that's opening up that front elevation. And that took a little while. But if I grab that by left mouse clicking while I'm holding a shift key down, we can see that now we've, we have it selected. I can open it up by double click on the icon. And this time I'm going to change it to limited. And I'm going to leave that on infinite, push OK. Now we can see 
that it's placed another marker but if I drag that behind the highest ridge in this job I can move that pet pal at any stage or get rid of it by clicking on the red cross if I move that to the highest spot on the building that's all the information I really need to create that front elevation this becomes critical on a multi-story project where you may have 20 or so stories and if you had the computer calculate 20 stories of infinite model space it might take quite a while however if you just show just the elements or limit it to the bare minimum information that's required to generate the document it will be a lot quicker it's also handy to turn off the layers of furniture or anything else that might sit inside the building that you won't see from the outside it's going to make it a lot quicker so i'm going to double click on it again we can see that it should open up much quicker and it's not going to show us information that we don't really want to see like the pool that was there that's gone now over here it's important to note that this marker here is lining up with the edge of this block or the site which is where I drew that marker sometimes if you draw the marker too long I'm just left mouse clicking there and holding my mouse button down if I drag that out while I'm on this icon in the pet palette which is stretch now if I go back to that elevation now we'll notice that when it opens up we'll notice that that marker is now all the way over there so just be wary or careful how you place your section and elevation markers because that's how they will translate in the actual section or elevation windows so that's how we control the length of these markers in the elevation markers I've just gone control Z and undone that and we see it's snapped back if I push control 7 our story settings come up or Apple 7 over here we can define the elevation mark so if I actually want a height marker to appear in the elevation or section window I check this box here so at the moment the roof floor plan isn't showing but if I tick it it'll pop up and if I push OK and now if I go back to that elevation we should see that that roof marker appears now we obviously don't need that there so we might just undo that by going control Z and hopefully didn't work so I'm just gonna check that box again and now it will work so it's jumped up to the roof plan at the moment I'm just gonna click back to the floor the ground floor plan one of the nice things in Arcad has always been the graphical capabilities of it so by holding the shift key down and rolling my mouse without pushing any of the keys down over the elevation marker we can see that it becomes highlighted and in the tag there we can see that it's actually got the correct item selected if I left mouse click once we can see it's got black dots and so it's actually selected now I can right mouse click on it and go to elevation selection settings but if it isn't selected I can also right mouse click in the navigator and go to elevation settings if I click on that We can change all the other parameters and markers and the heads as we did with the section tool but what I always like to show is under the model display at the moment what we've seen so far has just been the uniform pen color but there are a range of other things we can do here as well if I check own material colors non shaded and I'll push OK and then I open it again we'll see that some lines will disappear and we've got a bit of color in that elevation as well if I right mouse click on it again 
and go to the elevation settings and this time I'm going to include the vectoral hatching this time I'm going to use own material colors shaded and turn off the transparency and I'm going to push OK and it will rebuild again and I'll see a bit nicer again we can see even more color in the elevation now if I right mouse click again go to the elevation settings one more time and I'm just going to turn the sun shadows on if I choose that I can make it either as in the 3D window or custom if you choose the as in 3D window you'll generate accurate shadows as per the time that you have set in the 3D window but I just want to make it look sexy in this window so I'm just going to push custom there and I might change that to 25 degrees 45 is ok and I could leave it as it is and push ok now that will rebuild with some sun shadows as well as you can see it takes a little bit longer so there's my sun shadows what also looks good when you go to the elevation settings again sometimes if you just use uniform pen colors that can also look quite nice so from a graphical point of view, you can actually do quite a lot and make your drawings look very nice with very, very little work at all. And if you save any of these views with any of these settings, we can save them. We can save them as a favourite. Two, I can also save it in our view map and it will save all the view settings as well so it's view specific so if you've got your template set up correctly you can virtually do all these drawings with all the different graphical capabilities of ARCAD by pushing a button really there's one other treatment we can give to the elevation and that is this is also applicable for the sections as well and this has been moved from the Generals tab in the previous version to the Models tab. Here we can check the Mark Distance area. By checking that we get some more parameters opening up. And we might use nothing after the marker. I'll explain that in a second. I'm just going to leave Vectoral Hatching and Sun Shadows off for the time being and I'm going to push OK. Now what this allows us to do is give the model some depth. What we're saying from this point to this point the model will be treated a certain way and then from this point to this point the model will be treated in another graphic style. And we can choose those styles of course. It's a good way of giving a model depth. So I'm just going to open that elevation up again and we'll have a look at the effect of that now. So we can see up to that first marker we still have all the vectorial hatching and beyond that it's just all white or no colour at all. If I right mouse click and go to the elevation section again, this time after the marker I'm going to put the sun shadows on as well this time I might make them orange push ok now it'll take a little while to rebuild and once again we can see the different treatment it's a very powerful tool graphically then finally if I right mouse click there go to the elevation settings and I might just do one more thing Uncut elements. Make sure we've got own material color. Material sun shadows. Push OK. And there's another treatment as well. With no vectoral hatching on the background. So that thumbs up the section and elevation tool.